regardless of what your job is, there's only one way to do it, the best you can. I am Ricky DeForest Young. I was born December 3rd, 1957, Hall County Hospital in Gainesville, Georgia, to the late Mr. Grover Young and Mrs. Estelle Young. My mama got a lot of names, so I won't go into all of them. My daddy was a funeral director and an ambulance service director. My mom was a teacher. I'm the youngest of four sons. In a community, I was known as Grover's youngest boy and Estelle's baby. So I'm a mama's boy. Um, three older brothers, and I watched them, and they helped make me be me. When I came out, they said, you ain't like the rest of us. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Um, my mama said, you're different. I'm going to have to teach you everything. You don't miss nothing. So I like learning. And I've spent all my life trying to be the best at anything I do. I was taught that way by those people. My daddy, he died when I was 15. But the, last, the lasting lesson from him are the words that help mold me. He said, son, the only time one man should ever look down on another one is when that man is bending down to lift up the other man. And those have shaped what I do and who I am. He wasn't my only inspiration. I came from a family of teachers and public service folks. Teaching folks, caring for folks, that's what I learned up knowing. And of course, being in the funeral business, you get to see everybody at their worst. Being in the teaching business, you get to see everybody try to reach their full potential. Um, so I've always been a driven person. And from those people that raised us, we was taught that regardless of where we came from, through education, we could get to any place in the world we want to go and become anything we want to be. And so as I grew up as a kid, all those folks in the community inspired all of us to try and be our best. So I got this issue of, I got to always try to do my best. I've been blessed in my life that as I taught and coached, I tried to hold these two things in whatever I did. One, I was going to always try to be the teacher and coach that I wanted and the teacher and coach I want my children to have. So those are the things that have sort of shaped the way I view things and see things. And I came from a family where we were taught that the golden rule was the most important rule. Don't treat people the way they treat you. Treat everybody the way you would want to be treated. It's not easy, but it works. It brings success, it brings people in your life and make people want to be with you and be around you and be a part of you. I tried to take those with me as I've gone. One thing I would like to say about Mr. Young is that he's always trying to fix the best in people. Even if you think that you're already at your peak, he still finds something inside of you that gives you that little push to make you realize, I could be way better than I am before or than I ever was. When I started his class, I wasn't really 
trying to work. I wasn't really worried about my grades and stuff like that because I was already stable. And once I got into this class, not only was he teaching me economics, he was teaching me life lessons, stuff that I need just to survive in general, like how to be kind to people, just to always be your best no matter what situation you're in and how trust is everything. And even his little thought of the days can really change or impact something with inside of you. There's multiple ways that, <laughs> there's some days where, you know, I'm not gonna lie, like Mr. Young, I've been like, um, I'm so mad at this guy. But then after a while, I'm just like, he's so nice and so kind and he does so much for us. Oh my gosh. Mr. Young is an amazing father figure, you could say, actually. Like, I go to him to talk about, like, my issues. Um, he's actually, like, he's very affectionate, and I was not used to that, well, from my teachers. I was not used to that from my teachers, so it was really, like, shocking, like, somebody who actually cares about me. The one thing that I really love about Mr. Young is he care he he actually gives a flying <laughs> because like he cares about your ball being he even feeds me which is the best part about him and I know he's gonna prosper I always know that I'm gonna be brand name shout out to him and I try to be the best because of his class the lessons he's taught us about being the best it's inspired me to not only be the best in his class, but to be the best in life, not just school, not just work. Everything I do, I want to be the best now. Mr. Young has taught me that you're not going to get anywhere unless you are number one. And I hope that he inspires others to do the same because there's a lot of competition in class right now. And honestly, he makes class really fun. And he's really changed my life for the better. Bam, Ronald Francis Thomas. Whew. Doggone it. Can't believe he came back and then he came back and said, shut up, sit down, so I can tell you what we get ready to do for you. And I'm a blessed man because after 40 years in education, alumni keep coming back. And now that they heard I'm getting up out of here, more and more keep coming back. Um, that's me. I got to be this me because of all them people I've already talked about and the many people in this community that raised me. But I get to stay this me because I met this girl in college named Carla, <laughs> Diane McDonald. Oh, she made me so much better. Gave me them kids I got that let me have grandkids. And I got so many kids. My oldest brother, Grover, he knows how many children I got. I got four that we've raised in the house. Two biological, one adopted, one foster. He'll always say, how many sons and daughters you got? Cause he know I'm always adding to it. But I came out of that family. It was a big family, but it was always enough room to add somebody else in. Um, still remember. Furman, freshman year, football had started. No, we went before school started. But freshman orientation came about and they were having a square dance in the cafeteria. Me and my roommate and a few of us of color, well, we got together and go to the square dance to see who else was there. Oh, she had a French ball on her head, but she got them big old eyes, and I saw her up there on the balcony with them three or four other ones. Oh, mm. We became good friends. She became my little sister. Went with my best friend for a while. <laughs> oh, by the time he graduated, we were still there, and life happened. Anyway, so by the time I got to be a senior at Furman, we had plans already. We was going to get married. I left a lot of details out, but anyway, my best friend went to being my girlfriend. So that was a plus. We got married April 18th, 
1981, 2 o'clock here in Atlanta, although we both lived in South Carolina. All I can tell you is the best thing that happened to me in relationships is named Carla Diane McDonald, my wife, my lover, my friend, the mother of my children. And in 81, we got married. 84, Philip came. Philip James Anthony Young, my pride and my joy. He is now the um, Assistant Director of Sports Medicine, Head Football Athletic Trainer at Kennesaw State University, and he got that job when they started the program and told me he was going to get it. That's his wife, Jamie, and they gave us Jaden and Jackson James. My second child, Napian Elizabeth Diane Young, my daughter, my boo, um, she married Stefan Oates and gave me my first grandchild, Nevaeh, and then gave me, Nevaeh, you met taking pictures, then Taylor, and then Stefan Jr. She was, Napier married Stefan Oates, great son-in-law. So I've been blessed. My daughter-in-law is great. I got five grandchildren. Now, Sandra the third one has no children. Carolyn has two, Malaya Lynn and uh, Patrick. I'm getting old. I can't remember my grandchildren's name. So Carla has been with me the whole time. As a teacher and a coach, not a lot of time was spent at home, but she was a great teacher and coach's wife. And we looking forward to me retiring because she works from home and she is not semi-retired, but she get to do what she want to, get she flexible. I'm getting ready to get flexible too. But I am so grateful for you, Carla, and everything you've meant to me, because I am incomplete without you. It's rare to find people, to find educators, with the qualities and the compassion and the heart that Mr. Young clearly has. Um, hundreds of students throughout the years have been touched uh, by his, his care, his creativity, his flair, uh, and, and generations, in fact, have benefited from this. And uh, his effect uh, on our community, uh, it's going to be impossible to measure. But you see it every day, you see it around you. Uh, young students who may have chosen the easy wrong over the harder right, I think, will not, will not do that because they've had Mr. Young in their lives. Uh, we're going to miss him dearly as an educator. Uh, Mr. Young, we're going to miss you dearly. I remember the conversation that you and I had in my second week here at Gainesville. Uh, very uh, emotional, uh, heartfelt conversation uh, where I got to, uh, I think we both got to see uh, that our souls were not too far apart in terms of uh, our love for, for these kids and our, our desire for them to turn into great adults. So we're going to miss you. It's, it's a horrible thought to have to, to think about filling someone to fill your shoes. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do it, but we're going to find the best we can uh, and just try to find somebody that can, can take care of your legacy. So thank you, God bless you, and good luck with everything you're doing. Ricky, it is so good to know that you are retiring. I can't believe it, but you have done a very good job here in the Gainesville area and, of course, taking me back to the Gents Club. You know you were one of the really... It was amazing that you would come away from school when you were in college, you would come away from school and come and help me with the pageant every year. And that was, that was really fantastic. And now to see that you are retiring, oh, I can't believe it. But anyway, I want you to have a good retirement and I know you will, knowing you. And I probably got some work for you to do anyway once you retire, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we love you. We are so proud of you with your retiring. And I'm retiring too, so maybe we can get together or see each other around town or some of the family reunions. Have fun, enjoy it, take some trips. Just enjoy yourself. Congratulations and see you later, bye. Hello, Cousin Ricky. It's been great being your cousin for the last 10 years or so and working with you, you've just been awesome. And I know uh, you're kind of like me, uh, wearing down. I think you should have gone another year or so like with me, but 
I wish you the best in retirement. I know whatever you're going to do, that you're going to be a positive force. And may God be with you in all you do. Blessings to you. And thanks again for being such a great cuz. All right. He's an amazing man, and I'm so thankful and grateful that he's been here for the kids of Gainesville High School because he is a light, a beaming light here um, to the kids to know just how, truly how life is. He gives them life experiences every day, and in fact, um, a majority of his kids come back to tell them thank you for all that he's done for them. They don't enjoy the process while they're here, but they appreciate him once it's done and said. So I'm grateful for him. I hate to see him leave. And in fact, it makes me sad because the next generation truly does need another Ricky Young. So I'm grateful for him and I'm thankful for Carla for allowing him to be here with us. And we love you, Mr. Young, and many blessings and happy years of retirement. So I learned to depend on me. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I'll live the joy No matter what they take from me, they can take away. Ricky Young is my father-in-law. I am married to his daughter, Napier. Um, he's been a, a good guy, good influence in my life. Um, always been understanding, caring. Um, if he's got it, you got it. So that's always something that I've admired about him. Uh, something I've always looked up to. Um, one of the things that I always thought was really great about him was the way we first initially met when his daughter and I first initially got together and the way things happened. and coming to find out when my wife and I were going to have a child, his response to that um, was very opening and welcoming. And all he asked us was if we had a plan and that he was going to be there to support us and help us and to help us maintain that plan and to stay on that plan. And he did just that. You know, he would watch our daughter for us, our oldest for us, and take care of her during the summertime so that we could go to work and that we could go to school so that we could better ourselves. And so I always admired that about him and just the, the, the family, the structure, the, the strength that he has as the head of the family and everything that he does for all of us. So I really always appreciated that. And, you know, having my own family now, I've always tried to kind of emulate that a little bit and to, you know, be there for my kids and to always have their backs kind of like how he has our backs. So, and it's not like I'm his son-in-law, it's kind of like I'm his son. He's just a good, listener and he gives good advice without judgment without you know you feeling like you just completely messed up he just gives good advice and um i actually remember when i told him i was gonna have my oldest daughter i was so nervous and worried and he just said congratulations and he said aren't you gonna tell me congratulations i'm gonna be a grandfather so he just He's very understanding. Um, he's always there for everybody when 
people need him, he's just there for him. The best thing I remember growing up, and anyone can vouch for this, is his delicious food. He cooks with so much love and care that you feel like you're eating hearts and clouds and rainbows. You just feel such warmth and such care through his food. And that's something to this day I will never, ever forget. It's something that I genuinely would want to pass down to my kids and to even to friends, to family members. It's just, it's delicious and it's great. And it really just wraps up his personality. Awesome, great, fulfilling and there's um yeah so 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 to say thank you i would just say you know thanks for raising us right um thanks for being there for us um thanks for still being here for us but yeah thanks for thanks for making us uh making me who i am today hey ricky uh congratulations on the retirement um I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak and say you know how much you have uh meant to me and uh, our family. Um, and also to all the children that I have watched come through your household and what you've done for, for others. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of you. I hate, and, and one of the main reasons I really needed to show up for this was because I hate that Peter is not here to uh, express all that you meant to him. Um, I am, uh, I'm glad that uh, you married my sister. Um, I know you all have had a, one of the best relationships that I have seen uh, going through ups and downs and, and just uh, sticking together as family and, and showing what family really means. But, uh, but once again, I love you, brother-in-law. Uh, thank you for loving my sister. Thank you for loving my brother. Thank you for your wonderful kids. You know, I love, uh, all, all your children and all your grandchildren. And I, I wish you a, a happy and productive and, and just whatever you want in your retirement. Papa's the best because he lets us do whatever we want. He'll do anything for us and he's funny. I love Papa because he lets us have candy and he lets us watch TV when we go to his house. Hey, who, Papa? I have to say, the first time I saw my husband was in 1975 when we went to college and I saw him at the top of the stairs. He came into the cafeteria. We were having a freshman meet and greet. And when I first saw him, I was like, oh, wow, he's cute. And 44 years later, um, we're still together. So um, we were friends at first. At, in school, we were the best of friends. We were friends for three years before we even started dating. And then we started dating and it went from there. We've been married almost 38 years. So we 38 years in April. Um, we have raised four wonderful children. It has been interesting with the children. Um, that has encompassed a lot of our lives. And then him being a teacher, all the additional children that have come into our lives has been wonderful, mainly males, which has been great since we only had one boy and a lot of girls. So he was surrounded by females. So I think he liked having the nice, um, the young men join our family. And it's been a ride. It, it has been great. I, he's been a wonderful father, a great husband, family man to the bone. I mean, he is, Family, family, family. I, his, he came from a huge family. His family um, welcomed me and it was wonderful and um, hope to continue this. And husband, I have to tell you, it's been, it's been a nice ride. I um, am looking forward to your retirement and then hopefully mine soon to follow. And we can continue with um, what we started 44 years ago. Regardless of what your job is, there's only one way to do it, the best you can. If you fail while trying to do the best you can, you haven't failed. You gave it your best shot. So those things govern what I do. 
And after 40 years of teaching and coaching, I'm not sure what retirement means, but I know it's time to find out about some new things. I'm a lifelong learner, love learning. Only thing I love better more than teaching is learning. I'm glad I got that because that's what we got to get back to. And so to me that I am, as I'm calling this thing a retirement, I'm trying to move forward. Retirement for me doesn't mean I'm through. Retirement means I'm getting ready to go into a new commitment. There's something else for me to do, and I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to grow into it. I'm going to try to be it.